<laughs> oh, that's a little piece of heaven right there. <laughs> folks this is Josh Stony Ridge farmer welcome to the farm vlog today today we're gonna be working on the unicorn Dodge this is my 2000 Dodge Ram 5.9 liter Cummins the only thing that doesn't make it a perfect unicorn is that it's an automatic pickup truck so this is a 5.9 liter Cummins diesel it was the boss man's truck it's a Laramie it has the leather it has all the accoutrements it drives like a dream just a wonderful, wonderful truck. Today we're gonna show you how we do a full service on it. Basically clean the air filter, I've already done that. We're gonna show you how we change the fuel filter. We're gonna show you how we change the oil. Every video that I looked at online about this was shaky and some dude named Cody was running around everywhere. So we're gonna stop playing the games and we're gonna show you straightforward how to get this thing serviced. Change your fuel filter, change your oil filter, and change the oil, all right? So in going with the logical order of things, let's talk about the tools that we're going to need and the products we're going to need to accomplish this job. We're going to change the oil. We're going to change the fuel filter. We're going to show you how to do it. We're going to show you how to do it right, how I've done it so many times on this pickup truck. This is our Napa Gold filter, our fuel filter. We'll show you the fuel filter because it's important. Inside the fuel filter box comes a fuel filter. It's important. There's a divot on one side and a hole on the other side and an O-ring. That O-ring is important. There's also a Napa Gold filter. Napa does not sponsor my channel, although Napa Gold filters, I am told, are a division of Wix filters and it's simply the best filter you can get your hands on. So if Napa wants to come and sponsor the channel, come along and sponsor the channel. It'd be awesome. Another tool we're going to use is Super Clean. Super Clean is a friend of the channel and we use that to clean our air filter and this is called a Pro Dry air filter. I have had this on the truck ever since I bought it. There's some sort of a custom setup and you'll see it once we get under the hood, but the Pro Dry is a oil-free air filter system. Next tool, this is a, it's called a Hyper Tough, and there'll be links to all this stuff in the video description, but this is for removing your oil filter, or you can use it for removing most any filter. It's very, very easy to get in those hard to reach places with this thing. Next thing we use, my favorite screwdriver on the planet, this Klein Tools multi-screwdriver. I think it's 11 in one. That's what we use to take all of our hoses off with this little guy right here. Very, very simple, very easy. This is what we'll be using to take the oil plug out. This is a 3 8 drive socket with an extension. This is a Craftsman. This is the same set. I'm 40, almost 42 years old. And this is the same set that I had from high school. Good stuff. All right, and the last thing we're gonna use is the way to get the fuel filter out. So there's two ways to get the fuel filter out. You can use the half inch drive or you can put a 29 millimeter on there. And that's what we're gonna use is a 29 millimeter to free up that fuel filter. Let's get under the hood, get down to business and I'll show you what we need to do. Nothing special under here guys. This truck is bone stock, absolutely bone stock. Now I called Napa, I called the Dodge place and I called AutoZone and I got three different answers on how much oil that this thing holds. I forgot last time I changed the oil, I put it right here with a sticker and it says 11.5 quarts. I got 11, I got nine, and I got 10 from each different individual source. So 10, I do believe is the correct answer for the crankcase and oil filter combo capacity for this 5.9 liter, 24 valve Cummins diesel engine. This job requires a large drain pan. Don't use a small drain pan. There's 10 quarts of oil in here. This is a big engine. It holds a lot of oil. And we're gonna be using Rotella T6. T6 is the full synthetic Rotella. Some people might roll their eyes about that and say that that's gonna cause an oil leak. The jury's out. Going under the truck, I'm gonna get you all the way under here and show you what we're doing. This is the oil pan. That is the transmission pan. There is a video I have out on how to service the transmission. So we're gonna take our socket extension and stick it in there and loosen it up. Do not be a gorilla at this. It doesn't have to be so tight. You'll never get it out again. Don't you worry. If it drips a little oil, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's a diesel. It's supposed to be greasy. 
One thing I failed to talk about, we'll talk about it now. Warm your truck up a little bit. Just warm it up a little bit. You don't have to make it hot. About 110 degrees would be just fine. Don't warm it up to 180 degrees and burn your hand and then call me and start crying. This is what the oil plug looks like. It's a great big fat one. Take your plug, take a look at it. Make sure that your gasket is in good shape. Make sure it looks good. Wipe it off, clean it up, do a good job, do a neat job. Make sure it's clean and pretty. While the oil is draining from the crankcase, we'll take our 29 millimeter and we'll go under the hood here and loosen up the filter and pull it out. Be careful and don't spill diesel fuel all over God's creation. Be gentle, be careful. As we're looking at the front of the truck, right here is your fuel filter. Right here is where your wrench will fit, directly on there. That's where your fuel filter is, it's in that canister. So let's talk about what's in the way here. This is your dipstick tube for your oil. So you wanna loosen a nut right here and move that dipstick tube out of the way before you start pulling out your filter or you're gonna make a huge mess. This is a nine millimeter. Move this to the side. There's also another little cable in the way here. We're gonna take a bungee strap hook it around and pull that guy up here out of the way. Now we have clear shot to our fuel filter. Be very careful, very gentle. It'll come right out. Get it loose and then you can take it out with your hands. So when you get ready to take this filter out, it has a rubber gasket on it. You're gonna spill a tiny amount of diesel fuel. The biggest thing is getting things out of your way. Okay, now you're gonna see, there's gonna be a little bit, tiny bit of fuel spillage. Got to be careful. Now we lift very gently, very slowly. It's gonna pop loose here. There we go. Nice and easy, lemon squeezy. Now it's got fuel in it, so you got to let it drain out that fuel. That's the biggest thing. Just don't get in a hurry here. You're going to spill a little bit of fuel, but just be careful. So we've got our new Napa Gold filter, and we've got our old filter. Our old filter just kind of sets in there, and I'll show you. We pull it out, just like so. Discard it. There's also an O-ring that goes all the way around here, and you can either take your fingernail and get it out. I don't recommend a screwdriver, or you can use an O-ring tool, but it just pulls right off. Replace that O-ring. It will be brittle. It will be stretched out of shape. Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, but there is a tube that goes up through where the fuel filter goes, and that tube is what this slides down on. So this portion right here simply clamps right on, just like so. And by this time, you've got plenty of diesel fuel on your fingers. So take your diesel fuel that's on your fingers and kind of coat that O-ring really well. If you need a little more diesel fuel, I'm doing it pretty clean, then get you some more diesel fuel. Then lay that guy, that O-ring right in there. Don't overstretch it. Don't be a gorilla. Just be gentle. Roll it right over into its position. Let me tell you what happened when we first bought our truck, and this happened at the dealership. I was driving down the road, and I looked back, and I saw a trail of fuel, and I saw my fuel gauge just going, going down. They did not install the filter properly. They cross-threaded it, they twisted up the uh, O-ring, and consequently, I lost about a half a tank of fuel out on the road. Not cool. Let's put this guy back in. Now remember guys, our oil is still draining out. You can see the shaft right down there. We're gonna go right onto that shaft. We're gonna move this out of the way. We're gonna slip it right on there. And here's where most people screw up. They push down too hard and they do that. <laughs> so don't mash down really, really hard. That wasn't bad. You gotta give the filter time to absorb fuel. We don't want to splash out a bunch of fuel and introduce air to the system. So we want to gently get this guy started with our finger, very gently, not cross-threading. Make sure we're finger tight here. I can feel it snugging up nicely. And we'll get our wrench 
and we'll go in here and we'll give it a little bit more of a turn. Again, you don't want to pinch that rubber gasket. Pro tip from a not so pro guy, hang on to your old O-ring in case you tore your new O-ring because you ain't driving your truck anywhere without that O-ring in place. You're going to be spilling fuel. Don't put that dipstick arm back in place until you start the truck and make sure you don't have any fuel leaks. Little tip. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to reinstall this plug. Don't put it super duper gorilla tight. I don't know the exact specs on the torque for this. If you guys know, post it down there in the comments. We're just going to put it in there tight enough and then we're going to loosen the filter after we reposition our oil drip pan. Another quick pro, not so pro tip. When you get back under there to tighten that oil plug drain, be sure you take a rag with you. You want to wipe around and make sure it's all clean and make sure the guy before you or the guy 10 times before you didn't squeeze RTV on it or make a huge mess down there before because you don't want a dripping oil plug drain because somebody before you stripped out the threads. Here's where my truck may be a little bit different than your truck. I have an aftermarket air cleaner. So basically we're going to remove the hose from our aftermarket air cleaner. We're gonna remove the hose from the turbo and I've already pre-loosened this, so hopefully it comes off. <laughs> we'll take this guy out of here. These trucks with automatic transmissions have a notorious problem with interference with the ground. So this is a ground wire that the interference comes from. It's a alternator wire that picks up some sort of interference and causes the transmission to shift strangely. In other words, it jumps between gears. I've seen guys take aluminum foil and wrap around this wire and it stops the problem. We put two new batteries in here and it stopped the problem. I talked to another guy that's got a 24 valve like this and basically every six months he rewraps this with aluminum foil and it stops the shifting issue. Pretty crazy. We got our special tool, we got our new Napa Gold, and again guys, this thing should only be hand tight anyway. Yeah, it works great. This is a very difficult to reach area. This tool works great. All right, we'll loosen this guy up carefully. I'm on my tiptoes and I'm six foot five, so you may need a step stool for this thing. Gonna get greasy. <laughs> That's all right, I like getting greasy. Guys, if you like this kind of content, please pound that like button. Subscribe to the channel. This is just one of the many things we do here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Got a lot of stuff going on here. And the Willie's Jeep restoration going on too. Here's the old filter. And there's a drip on the fender. Ain't that pretty. Long life engine preservative. We did a good job there. Now, when we get done, we're going to take our finger, our clean finger. We're going to make sure we got the gasket right there. So the next little tool we're going to use that makes our life easy is this oil transfer can. So it holds four quarts of oil. This will hold 10 quarts of oil. We're going to put about nine and a half and then we'll start it up and check it. Here is our new Napa filter and we're going to take a little dab of that oil and we're going to put it on this gasket right here and we're going to install that filter once we fill it about nine tenths of the way full. We don't want to like spill it all over everywhere. So we'll take this little container and this is where you see if I've got nerves of steel or not. Yeah, my nerves are pretty good. Looks like honey. <laughs> I think it probably holds close to a quart. Oh, it's coming on up there. Come on, little buddy. Did that without spilling it. I'm impressed. <laughs> now, if I can reinstall it without spilling it, <laughs> that will be the impressing feat. Oh, baby. Yep, you don't want to fill it all the way full because you got to tip that thing a little bit to get him in there. Be careful, don't cross thread. Get it started. Nice big old coarse thread on there. We've put about half a quart in. We've got about nine and a half quarts to go. We're going to fill her up and we're going to start it up, check for fuel leaks and check the oil. Guys, remember when you're tightening that oil filter down to only go hand tight, but when your hands can't reach it, it's kind of hard to judge hand tight. So we again use this wonderful tool here to tighten it down just gently, just enough to seal that gasket. One tool that I absolutely forgot to mention, a funnel. Guys, if you're going to take the time to change your oil, take the time to use a funnel. Don't get in here and spill oil all over your engine. Take the time. You've got enough gumption to change your own oil. Take the time to use a funnel. 
All right, let's take our rag, remove our funnel, wipe it clean. We'll reassemble the air filter assembly and we'll fire up. This is the part where the 11 and one comes in handy. First thing we wanna do, make sure we put oil in the crankcase, just to double check. We'll check our engine oil, just to make sure. Again, nice and gentle, nice and easy. Ooh, that clean oil. It won't be clean for long in that diesel, I tell you that. Okay, we'll reinstall. Surgical precision, oil change. Nice. Cool. It should be a little bit high. We don't have all the oil circulating in the drivetrain, but it shouldn't be very high. I think we'll be fine. Let's fire it up and make sure our fuel filter set in properly. This is not a tool shelf, by the way. I did a no-no. I guess that did it. <laughs> now I'm ready to take it for a drive. Guys, thanks a lot for coming to join me here on the Stony Ridge Farm. I hope you enjoyed this no-nonsense, how to service a second-generation 24-valve Cummins turbo diesel, beautiful unicorn pickup truck. I love that truck. It's my baby. I got a couple more babies over here. That's my 5.9 gas. That's my fuel truck. I carry my fuel for my tractors on. That's the $100 truck. That's the Ventrac. Baby chickies. Beautiful sunset in the foothills of North Carolina here chicken coop, garden, lots of fun stuff going on here on the farm, guys. So thanks a lot for joining me. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm. All right? Well, Woo! come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Get in there now. Just enough room. <laughs> <laughs> to make it a pain in the butt. I have a lot of old plastic parts that like to break when you touch them. They turn into powder, especially the dashboard. Oh, come on, dude. Make it happen. Make it show. Oh, that's it. That's the one. <laughs> that is fulfilling. Oh, that's not fulfilling. Am I turning it the right way? Yeah? I sure hope so. I'm not. I'm the biggest dummy alive. Please, just go on. Will you please? Mm. I need more room. My hand's too big. I hate you. Dude, I don't remember you being this bad before. Oh, what's going on here, man? There we go. <laughs> oh, that's a little piece of heaven right there. <laughs> if you've ever done that, <laughs> man, that was heavenly. <laughs> Trailer life, baby. Woo! <laughs> See you next time.